Hi everyone, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And I'm Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? I'm doing good. I have my cocktail and I'm feeling real fun. Yeah, I have my <laughs> um, Kapsov. It's not a classy Kapsov, it's the box wine that's left for my birthday. Party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all classy here. <laughs> I'm also quite stoned, so, you know, it's a chill night. Oh, this because... is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Very. <laughs> um, so we're going to flip the script a little bit. Normally, Donatella, my secrets, is asking me questions, but because in honor of her birthday, and we're le- releasing this after her birthday, so mm-hmm. this is actually a really good time to have a little bit of a look back because we moved, um, well, Donatella moved to Portland the day before her birthday into her birthday on March 20th of 2019. And so I'm going to be asking her questions this time, and she's going to be telling you guys about her thoughts, her feelings. Um, we're, do, we're still trying to keep it a little bit more drag-centric, but there's some questions about life in general that we're going to tackle today. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh my gosh, I'm so <laughs> excited. I feel like I'm an interviewer, I guess. <laughs> you're, you're Diane Sawyer. I'm Diane Sawyer. <laughs> Barbara Walters, if you will. <laughs> I'm Whoopi from The View. <laughs> Okay, so my first question is, Donatella, my secrets. Yes. So, um, actually, let the let the uh, let the boys and girls know how old you are. How old did you turn on my? I 20? just turned twenty eight. Um, when I moved here, it was on my twenty seventh birthday. So you've lived here for about a year now, and some yeah. change when this gets released. Yeah. Um, talk about what it was like when you first moved here mm-hmm. to now. Um, it was. A very surreal experience when I first moved here. It felt magical. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but um, you also have to keep in mind that I lived in my home city of Grand Junction, Colorado for 27 years of my life. So um, I hadn't ever been anywhere else. I had never lived anywhere else. I stayed in my home city and that was the bubble that I had always known. And so getting dropped into this much bigger pond was daunting and a lot. And I think I handled it fairly well, but um, I also know that it uh, was a situation that uh, really, like, made me grow, especially first starting to be here. Hmm. So, um, just for the folks, Mm -hmm. did, so you started drag in Grand Junction, Colorado, correct? I did. I did. You know this. I do know this. (laughs) They don't know this. (laughs) Um, yeah, yeah. I started in, in Grand Junction. Actually, me and Coco started together. Mm -hmm. So, um, we started drag, uh, let's see, I want to say it was like 2013, 2014, probably. Yeah. 2013, some, I think. Some time that I consistently <laughs> and constantly lie about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just because I was a booger queen, and I was like, God, I've been doing drag we for had, four years, and I look busted. We had a long booger phase. Long booger phase. <laughs> Gosh, it was so It's what happens when, like, all you have to compare is, like, your friends that are, like, <laughs> like building, you're like, you're a great girl, and it's like, yeah, like... I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to not look like garbage. Yeah. So, um, so well, yeah. Did you there. did you move? Um, I think we talked about this before, but just for the the nature of this episode, um, had you visited Oregon before? And then, why did you like Oregon? Why did you want to choose Oregon? So I had only visited Oregon months before I moved here. I visited Oregon October, and I moved here in March. Um, I visited after we had kind of talked about moving here. So I knew that this was going to be the destination or it it was possibly going to be the destination. It was going to be either here or Denver. I was moving no matter what, uh, come March. (laughs) I just wanted to get out. Um, so yeah, I visited that October with some friends. We stayed, actually, I didn't even go to Portland. We stayed in Lincoln city and just stayed on the coast and went on some hikes and, The state, the lush greenery, all of that, the rain, it was just something that really made me feel like I belonged here. It made me feel whole and made me feel happy. And um, I I thought that it would be just a great place to go adventure and and grow. So after being there, it kind of solidified it for me that I wanted to be in Oregon. 
Yeah, I yeah. think that that's really cool. Um, just a side note, when I moved to Oregon, um, I actually never visited Oregon before I moved here because yeah. I'm stupid. <laughs> um, and it's one of my favorite stories. Literally, I'm crossing. So Donovan's a, Donatelle's asleep. And we are crossing the state lines. And I have the worst panic attack in the universe because I'm like oh my god I've never even seen this place <laughs> and Donatella was being good she's like oh this is where this is and this is where that is and this is what this is and this is that river and I'm like oh my gosh does it really rain all the time I'm gonna die I'm gonna drown <laughs> I'm gonna drown from the rain it was awful but um living here um for several months in my capacity it's actually been Really wonderful, but this isn't about me. So we're going to continue on <laughs> to Donna's tell a second question. Yeah. Um, how has your drag evolved since you've lived here? Oh, so much. Um, I cover my brows more and try new things. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I I guess I haven't experimented as much with my makeup as I'd like to. I think I'm going to start doing more of that. I um, have refined a better everyday drag makeup, though. Um I wanted to come here and do a lot of really fun artistic creative stuff right, right off the bat, but when it came down to it, it was like, as I'm trying to get into the scene, I was trying to integrate myself and do shows, so like whatever shows came up, I didn't really have time to like explore with a lot of creativity as well, because I had the drag that I brought here and I was going to show off, and um, then I had, you know, shows that I was doing just to try and get my name out there, because, you know, you don't start off in a scene and... Um, just not put yourself out there. If you want to get bookings, if you want to get, you know, out and uh, perform, then you uh, you need to be out doing drag. So, yeah, you know, it was it was basically that uh, the face that you put on if you're doing a show with a few numbers and all that. You know, you have to refine that and get that really down, and you have to be able to do a a fair mix of numbers, but not anything too elaborate. You know, show off your skill sets and your talents and it's definitely something that's taught me that, um, yeah, that I like doing drag this much. I like I like having all these shows and stuff, but um, at the same time, I think that you can lose a bit of passion when you're doing it as a job rather than, like, a creative outlet. So right now, I guess I'm at the point where I want to, like, start doing more creative stuff and evolving in that way. Mm -hmm. So, just fun fact for everybody, what was the first show that you ever performed in when you moved to Portland, and what's your first booking, like a true booking show? Ooh, my first show that I ever performed in, I guess it was with you. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm, it, I was, it was part of a duet with Coco, That's because true. True. I went out and drag with her, and um, we went to Not Another Drag Show at Tonic Lounge, and that was my first time performing. But it wasn't really the show that I was I was asked to do. It was you you got me in there. True. Because, thanks but, to Diana. Yeah, but I think that yeah, thank you, and Diana them. Fire. Go yeah. follow her online at Go Diana Fire. Uh, yeah, that but that counts though because that was a full number. Mm -hmm. If it was just like oh, I just came out here and did a kick and then left. Yeah, yeah, that counts. So what was your first? And then my first booking. Mm -hmm. um, non tip spot. Yeah, <laughs> I um. I want to say it was probably Radisson Red, maybe. It might have, yeah, it might have been Radisson Red. Okay. So that brunch, it was, it was a brunch, I'm pretty sure. I yeah. think, yeah, because brunches are one of the biggest things mm -hmm. I've made here. And then there was a, there was a charity event I did at Monsoon Manor. So that was like the first, like. Thing that I did and it was like it was give it was a fundraiser and it was a event that Katya presents put on so okay. yeah so my next question is what advice do you have for any drag entertainer who might want to move to Portland um the biggest advice that I would give is definitely put yourself out there but like don't lose what makes you different and special. Like, keep refining that, keep being weird, and keep diving into that. I think that if I could do something differently, I would have not taken quantity of shows. I would have taken more, you know, like, quality. I still would have wanted to get my name out there, but I feel like I suffered burnout really quick because I took 
too many things. So focus on on refining the things that make you you. And if you haven't figured that out, figure it out while you're here. I feel like I even had a bit of figuring out to do as far as like my drag aesthetic goes and what I wanted, who I wanted to be as a drag entertainer. Um, but yeah, try not to get burnt out because you're taking so much on. Put your get yourself out there. Be kind. Be humble. But don't get burned out. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I um, have we have we do we know any entertainer who moved here after us that hit it as hard? I don't know. I don't know either. I know some that turned twenty one. Yeah. Um, like Monochrome turned mm-hmm. twenty one. Um, but I don't know of people who moved to the scene. Um, there. But that could mean just being being naive. I'm not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot of the East Siders. Mm-hmm. Um, so there could be that too. Yeah. Um. So wh- I think Tina G moved here around the same time that we. Well, you did around the time that I did. I think. Um. Or she had been here and then and then gone out and drag later. Maybe she had been here longer. But her and then I think Summer. Uh, Rain had already been here, had been here around the same time that I did and, and started. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I mean, and they were definitely some queens that hit the scene very hard too. Um, yeah, I, it's definitely interesting. I think after being here for a year now, it's going to be interesting to see who pops up. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's going to be interesting not being the new girl on the block. Yeah. That'll be kind of cool to see. Yeah. So, um, I'm changing this next question just a little bit, but Mm -hmm. what's one thing you missed about Colorado that's not people related? Mm. Okay. Uh, that's not people related. So (laughs) does it, is it just Colorado or, or Grand Junction? Um, it can be either or. Um, so obviously it can't be friends or family, but Mm -hmm. so I guess, um, Okay, so I'll, I'll say one for each. One thing I miss about Grand Junction is the quaintness, how it is much smaller than where we're at. Yeah. And so, and and because I went to school there, you know, I, I knew a lot of people. So I guess that's that's a simple thing. It's, you know, it's, it's different being in a place where you don't constantly run into people you know, because I don't really feel like I ever run into people I know when I'm out and about, um, unless I'm downtown. Like if I'm in other areas of Portland, I don't really run into anyone else that I know. Yeah, well, because when you consider Portland feels like the size of Grand Junction, um, Portland is very small. For those yeah. of those of you in Colorado who are listening to this, Portland is actually the square footage is very small. Yeah, and um, and they have two point one million people. Mm-hmm. When you think about Mesa County, it only had a hundred and twenty thousand people. Yeah, yeah. So if you have like literally two point one million people living in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's kind of what Portland looks like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that would just be included with, like, Palisade. If you went from Palisade all the way to the mall and all the buildings in between, that's, like, the size of Portland. Yeah. Um, and then something I, I miss about Colorado... Um, hmm. About Colorado in general. I, I guess the sun. The sun is one thing that I miss. <laughs> Uh, I, everyone said that seasonal depression would like hit hard here because of how it is in winter. And I did not expect it to hit me as hard as it did. But, um, yeah, I miss the sun because we get a lot more sun in Colorado and, uh, the skies are much bluer and clearer there, but I love the humidity, humidity here. And I love being on the coast. So, so uh, I actually want to answer this because of what you said. So mm-hmm. me and Donatella had this moment where uh, we were standing on the beach. By the way, I grew up in Colorado, too. Um, I lived in Florida for a few months, but I've Mm -hmm. been in Colorado my entire life. And Colorado, as you know, is a landlocked state. Mm -hmm. Um, Sure, we have water, but not truly like a beach beach, not the ocean Mm -hmm. beach and whatever. And I've been to the beach now several times in the seven months or seven or eight months I've lived here. Mm -hmm. And I remember me and Donatello were at what beach that we were joking about we were at some beach coming mm-hmm. up the coast yeah um and we were looking out at the water and it was just so cool and uh, i think i've decided that that was the first beach that too that i think that i actually watched the sunset on because oh, that other was, times that i've yeah. been there it's been too cloudy to see it 
So it was cool to actually watch the sunset. Yeah, it's really crazy to watch the sun, like, fade and, like, with water. Mm -hmm. And I will say this. I actually think I appreciate, um, like, the mountain backdrop with water Mm -hmm. opposed to just, like, deserts, mesas, book cliffs, Mm -hmm. and, like, With your occasional lake. There's not many lakes. Like, (laughs) many big lakes in Colorado, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, And so I think I really appreciate that landscape, like, that background portrait on my computer versus just dirt Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) to a degree like because the monument and like the monument for all my colorado friends like the colorado national monument is beautiful it's Mm -hmm. it's gorgeous so many hiking trails like devil's kitchen is gorgeous Mm -hmm. um you can google for all the people who do not live in colorado google devil's kitchen it's a beautiful easy hike and whatever and it's gorgeous and it's sometimes green yeah but like being on the beach with like that landscape is just so Mm -hmm. Cool, and I think that I love that a little bit more than I love rocks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, So what's one thing you wish you could change about the year? Other than the feeling of getting a bit of drag burnout, I think the one thing that I would change... I, You know, there's not much that I would change because this year was definitely a learning period for me. Um, It was a period of time where I got to really get introspective and look at the way that I handle things. And it's taught me a lot about myself. It's taught me a lot about other people. Um, It's taught me to be a lot more level-headed, which has been really great for me. (laughs) Um, Because we all know how manic I can be sometimes. (laughs) But, um, yeah, no, it's definitely, I think all of the lows were meant to happen. Um, and, you know, I, I cried over some dudes. I, um, <laughs> I drank a little bit too much on occasion and, uh, then I, uh, I got through it. So it was a nice first year. There were a lot of learning, learning experiences, even though it was rough sometimes. So, just a couple of highlights um, outside of our drag lives. People don't know this, but the I've been thinking about this a lot, and I really... So, we live in a new place versus where we lived when we first got here, and I think I really actually loved that house more than I thought I did. I really like where we live now, but we had an incident where one of our roommates flooded our house, not me or Donatella, and so we had to move very mm-hmm. quickly. And that's really difficult to do. That was still technically within both of our first um, years of living here, obviously. Yeah, yeah. To have to move twice that big in a year was rough. And then also, um, also I got married. Coco got married. And Donatella was the one who married me and my husband. Oh, yeah. I officiated it. Yeah. yeah so we've had like a lot of <laughs> crazy downs, like having to move and getting really depressed and then hardships with relationships and people moving away. Um, And also because this does fall on in the time span which we want to talk about this, we, me and Donatella both lost a friend named Ray McKinney, um, who was a beautiful soul. He was. um, Great and amazing person. And my sincerest condolences to his family and his husband, Eric, um, they've only been married since June of 2019. Mm -hmm. And so right after... Uh, they got married right before I moved here. And so that is just really heartbreaking. And so I guess with the reason I wanted to bring that up too is that I know for all the people who made it this long in our podcast, what I want to say is just make sure you respect and love one another. Time yeah. is short. Um, so like with us, we had to move out of a house in the blink of an eye. Uh, a friend of ours lost their husband. Um, friends can get married. Um you know, or you can be quarantined because of a virus. Yeah, so yeah, our current state of affairs, which will, I'm sure, come up in the coming weeks as we record more of these episodes. Yeah, but. we're going to have two episodes that are released kind of right away because we wanted to catch up with everybody, and then it'll be kind of more on a schedule. And I really wanted to get this conversation in here about Donatella's first moments here. And we do want to leave everybody on a positive note versus the negative stuff mm-hmm. that we kind of talked about. <laughs> the one thing about quarantining yourself... Um, is that a word? Quarantining yourself? Yeah. Is you can finally wash your drag brushes. <laughs> yeah, and your drag. That's something that I am guilty of. I am going to wash all my drag, especially since it's been in that mildewy-ass basement. 
<laughs> Yay. Um, and try and reinvent myself a little bit. I mean, mm-hmm. I think everyone is tired of my Lycra body suits. I like your like <laughs> Shout out to Natalie Simone. No, <laughs> no I I do love my like her body suits, but I um yeah I want to try I want to try some riskier stuff with my drag. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do some eye makeup looks that I really want to try out because drag is like 99 percent eyes, and then like mm-hmm. the rest of it's like costumes and blah blah blah. Yeah. So I guess that's where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, we're officially at the 20 minute mark, and I think Donatella is the one who always usually takes us out. So. So, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of A Gem of the Secret Podcast. We will see you next week when we discuss what's going on in our lives as queens here in Portland, Oregon. Follow me at, at Coco Gem Holiday, that's C-O-C-O-J-E-M Holiday on Instagram. And you can follow me at Donatella underscore my secrets. Thanks again, everyone. Bye!